Hey everyone, it's gonna be a very different episode of Zero Turn today because I don't have Josh with me. I'm gonna be doing this all vlog style, just camera to face, just like this. But we're gonna be going and visiting Mitten Mowing, Robert and Vicki Tidwell, just awesome people. I know you're gonna love them. And I hope you can learn something for your business on how to make it better, make it grow, and make it more efficient. Uh, so I'm in Michigan, it's actually, just past midnight right now, my flight got canceled going into Flint, Michigan, so I had to go over to Lansing, Michigan, and I took an hour and a half drive. Now I'm in Claire, Michigan, and then tomorrow morning, or I guess later this morning, I'm gonna go over to Mitten Mowing, just a few minutes from here at the hotel, and show you around. So, I look forward to it, and I hope you learned something today. Yeah, it, it's huge. It takes a while to literally learn. Like, it's really, really overwhelming. It totally is, so don't feel bad. It took us probably, like, I'd say 12 to 24 months before we were good at it. Okay. So, um, before we kind of, I kind of jumped to a few things. What's some of the things that you kind of, he mentioned you have already have um, automation, so you're not really using a whole lot? We're not using it at all. Okay. We have it. We are not using not it. Not using it? Okay. No. So, um, let's see here. So is it usually like one a day or so that he's sending out like in terms of estimates? Um, well, it kind of fluctuates. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, cause he'll get, it just depends when he gets them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there really is no, um, organization. Yeah, yeah. There's not, there's not really any systems for anything. Right. I mean, I won't lie. There's just not. Yeah, but on the other side too, like, um, part of it too is just generating the revenue right now, right? Right. Because when, 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 when you start doing the systems and like even trying to make it more efficient, if there's not enough for you to kind of dig your teeth into, it's almost like you can create all the systems in the world, but if you're not actually saving money because of it, it's tough to continue doing it. Like yeah. You lose, you lose the drive when there's nothing like to really save on, but like from, from a... Uh, a revenue standpoint, because he was saying like this year you know, your goal was three hundred. Mm -hmm. He's thought, thought maybe two fifty this year. That's where I think we'll land. Okay, and so so right now you're not running expenses through SA. You're doing that through Excel. He was saying, and then uh, how is that working? Is that pretty good? Um, or he he mentioned the QuickBooks issue. No, yeah. So, so I have to try that again. Okay. Um, but even with the expenses, I mean. It, nothing is tracked mm -hmm. like right now like everything is ready to like um it's all added up collectively yep but nothing's tracked okay okay we started off like this spring um and i was working up at the school so then i stopped that you know to come home and do this right but then we had a lot of like family um mm -hmm. health problems and things yeah. so it kind of um it just wasn't time. Yeah. It just kind of ended up so everything is just kind of snowballed mm -hmm. into this like big mess. Right. So right now you're working part time at the school, is that right? Or you're working full time there? Yeah, I went. I went back to the school this fall, so I do that about thirty hours a week, and okay. then I also have two cleaning jobs I do oh, as well. Okay. So I try and I do everything, and then I still have time to do like the basic things, like payroll and send out invoices and things like that. Mm -hmm. But and then you're answering the phone too, right? I'm not now that okay. I went back. I was. Okay. okay. Yeah, but he's kind of, because we don't have a lot of calls right now, and right. we're pretty much full as far as um, cleanups and things. Yep. So there's not too much for me to have to do okay. with that. Okay. All right. And, and in terms of the mowing versus the landscaping, how do you feel like from a financial standpoint, where is it 
a wash on mowing? Um, no, I don't think it's a wash on mowing. Okay. I do think though we have um, we have a huge commercial client, and we we have a lot of uh, apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. We have some other commercial buildings, um, but I just think that the margins that they're willing to give. And the amount that we have to drive to get there, um, we just figured it out and it's just not worth it. So we did decide, um, we talked to them about that and we decided, we told them that we were not going to come back next year. That, you know, for us, um, it's just not, you know, it's just not profitable. Right. Um, and they understood and they were really nice, but that is a big chunk of money. Mm -hmm. However, we think if, you know, if we stop doing those, we don't have to be as far spread out, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna we're gonna drop two of our areas and just come back to kind of the local couple of areas, and I think that will be more profitable that way. Right. So. Right. Okay. Which might might affect revenue top line a little bit. Like if you cut them out, kind of thing. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah. I mean, it might, but I think that um, because right now we were saving landscaping, you would start a project on Saturday. Yep. So a big thing for us was overtime just killed us. Mm -hmm. And we tried really hard to find people, but it just wasn't working out. Yeah. So the amount of overtime was just, I mean, horrendous. Right. So we figured that we're going to actually leave days in the week to be able to do that and only mow certain days. So I think that, you know, we should come out like... I think pretty good. Okay, okay. Cool. So. And he's been doing the scoreboard every day um, yeah, since we talked there. to you. And okay. that has been really helpful and it's been really eye-opening right. for us. Right. Um, in like very, you know, not great way, but right. <laughs> it's good to know. Like I, I like seeing the numbers and it's knowing awesome where we're at. It's awesome this on each person too. Yeah. Yeah, like I look at these and these larger ones, like those are really low prices for that. Yeah. Like because, for example, if you have a, a twenty-two thousand dollar, a twenty-two thousand square foot lot, and it's forty dollars per week, you charge ten dollars more to double the size of the property. Yeah. Which, like, for ten dollars, like, if, unless it takes ten more minutes, it should be like almost double the price. Yeah. So I mean, that's. But we do know we have to raise them. We are a little afraid of. Right. We'll, we'll land, but I, I think there's other people out there doing that. At mm -hmm. least I know there's a couple other companies who are or higher like us. So Yeah, like I would, what I would do if I was you is, I don't know if you have some like friends or family around that you could get quotes from other companies. Have you done that before? I think we did that when we first started. Yeah. From like one or two. Um, I would do like three or four. Okay. Try, and try, try to get like, because I have a feeling, so I know for example, like, I always recommend that your bi-weekly bi be 50% more than this. The bi-weekly, yes, we have, um, we've talked about that, yeah. and we are, we are not doing that in, like, in the spring. Right. Um, oh, yeah. We, we're telling, we're doing, we're in the same boat. We right, had the same thing about. happen. Same thing happened to us this past spring. We had this really fast spring, and we allowed bi-weekly, we've always allowed it, but this oh, year it just, just so hard. hard. Yes. You all had the, all that rain. Yes, yeah, so right, it was, it, and then I even, um, there's a young couple that has um, a business over in Midland, and sometimes she'll call me and talk to me about some things, and we were talking about that, and they had the same issue, so I was kind of telling her what you were telling us, yeah. or the video we were watching, is yeah. that you just either have to cancel it out or make them be weekly until it's actually an acceptable time to be yeah. bi-weekly. Yeah. So. Even if you said, like, hey, it has to be through May. For yeah. example, that you have to go weekly. We're going to be really hard on that this yeah. year. Yeah. So. Like, um, I would say if you're going to raise prices, and if you feel like this one's going to be a tough raise, I would just at least raise this one and then force them to they, they'd be like, hey, look, your your mo your mowing's going to go to 65 bi-weekly, but you could go to 50 weekly, right? And so, because then you will push them into the weekly service naturally, and so you can just kind of penalize the bi-weekly people. Yeah. Because if someone just wants their lawn, like, cut, they're gonna always go for bi-weekly. Oh yeah. Because it's only five dollars more. You can tell the people too who, well, could you even do it monthly? Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. They try really hard, but. Yeah, and and we allow we allow people to go monthly. And oh, do you? Yeah, we just add a lot more, like another fifty percent. Oh, okay. Because so, we just totally like shut that down, like. Yeah, yeah. Look, because like during July and August, there's some lawns that won't grow at all hardly where we're at. That's our hot season, so mm -hmm. like, they will. They really only do need it mo like we uh, monthly. But we will go like if, they, if they're charging if we're charging forty for weekly, they, this would be sixty, and then this the other one would be eighty. Like monthly would be eighty. 
Okay. Yeah, so like we're always looking for at least 50 minutes. And how you want to present is not like, it's not like it takes you way less time as, as much as like there's a discount for more service. Mm -hmm. The same as if you'd go to a store and buy two computers, you expect like the second one to be some sort of a deal on. Yeah. Right? If you buy more services, you, you can really present it to them as a discount. Like, hey, look, your lawn's going to cost $50 to mow. If you go weekly, it's going to cost 40 right, per mow. And so in making it more like almost a discount instead of it's like a bigger to go buy. To go buy the big right. These numbers are pretty low for mowing. You can see the square footage is kind of their range. But if you look at 22,000 uh, square foot, that property on a weekly basis can get $40 per mow, whereas literally twice the square footage, 44,000, is $10 more per week. And so ten dollars more for twenty two thousand dollar twenty two thousand square feet more of lawn is pretty low in terms of um, pricing. And so on those larger mows, there's it's going to be very difficult to be profitable, especially if they're not it's if it's not a tight dense route. So uh, just looking into that. For example, if someone thinks they're worth fifteen bucks an hour, and you know I want to give them the opportunity to make that. It's just that they're gonna have to make a lot of money for the business, right? And so like, even if you did something like I was thinking, is something like they got a dollar more power if they hit like over three, for example, but had no callbacks, for example, okay. right? Because like if someone's skipping, like he was saying James does, then it's no, you can't just give it based upon the scoreboard. Um, what do you do though if you go up the following week and you feel like the work had not been done properly? What do you do at that point? Then you take it away. So like okay. when when you because we're doing strictly paid by performance, which means like there is oh you no, have switched yeah, totally yeah, on yeah, that okay yeah they no longer have an hourly rate, um and so that's that's a step like that takes some time that takes like a big commitment, uh and it would be tough if you're not full time in the office really. But what you could do is like a hybrid of that, which is because you're, you're already tracking the numbers, you're already tracking your scoreboard if you gave some sort of a bonus mm -hmm. that, you, that could be taken away based upon that daily rate or that daily like production right but then it could be taken away so for example if they go the next week and there's a bunch of weeds and then no one pulled them that just goes back into whoever you know and just takes right off of their paycheck so do you kind of um do that on like a monthly do you pay that you like could do that you could do to that make that work or you could do that like we we do it we do 100 percent pay for pay for performance so for example if someone shows up and their weeds are, there's a bunch of weeds we're literally going to go back to that person's paycheck and take money away from them not just a bonus like we're taking money away from them oh okay um and so that can get tricky huh it does get tricky <laughs> then so like it took us a long time to figure out like get all the little details right because there's mm -hmm. a lot of like well what if someone like leaves the blower bag full of clippings and then the next day someone comes on mowing somebody around. else's time someone else's yes. time right and so all of that had to be kind of like slowly kind of figured out but i do think there's like a hybrid like because okay. that takes a while to kind of switch everyone's mindset but that being said drive times get shrunk really fast when all of a sudden they're getting paid by performance well and that's something that um we've been trying to keep a better eye on as well because the stops and things mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I'll check the GPS or just what they have on service autopilot yep. and I'm like did you get gas today no okay well you yeah. know we can't stop for drinks every morning like you gotta come in before work and get those kind of things so I can see where that can be helpful yeah. I just it's a big commitment to go yeah. all paper performance it really is not easy um, however I, I think because he's already doing the numbers for the scoreboard. Yeah. And like, so, for example, if you're like, okay, look, right now our average is, say, tw I'm, based on what I'm seeing, like, 2.5, 2.6. Anything over 3, you know that you have 0.4, which is, like, $9 per hour that is more beneficial to the business. Because a 3 versus a 2.5 is, like, you know, $8, $9 difference. Yeah. And so, you know, you could make something, I think, that would give them incentive to beat 3. And that would still... Then, because in order to get that, they have to skip the the gas station breaks, you know, not be in their truck. Because, like, well, I found it's not so much the gas station breaks for our guys, because our guys are, were really good. Like, I was pretty proud of them, even beforehand. They, they, were, they wouldn't stop, make stupid stops and stuff. But it was the 30 seconds to a minute on every stop 
before and after on their phone. Yes. Right? So like you would pull up to a job, they pull up the job, and the doors don't open for a good 30 to 60 seconds. Right? And then when they get back in the truck, same thing. It's not yeah. like stop, out, go, hop in, run. It's, you know, park on the phone, send a few text messages, and then hop out of the truck. The thing is, when you make their pay, this is how I kind of look at it. It's like, until it affects their pay, they don't care. Most okay. of them will that never care sense. unless it affects their pay. I know if that's how it was for me, like, I would. Yeah. So some people, like, they want to buy into a culture and, like, that's enough for them. But for most people, like 99% of laborers, if it does not affect their paycheck, they do not care. It makes sense. Like until it really affects them, if they're not bought into like the mission of the business, which you can't expect them to, they just, you know, they just might be showing up for a job. Mm -hmm. But until like, you incent them to do what you want, which is to be efficient. Like everyone talks about like buying better equipment to make things more efficient. Like if someone asks, yeah. you know, for mowing, how do you make it more efficient? Most people will be like, you know, types of mowers or like even like going trailer the setup or whatever it is like that but the biggest efficiency is the the labor yeah of course like and they, it's so phenomenal how much they get more efficient when you start tying their paycheck to what they're doing yeah oh, like yeah. even if it's small even if like it is a dollar two dollars per hour if they get over a certain number it on makes the a difference board, yeah yeah like, it definitely makes yeah. a difference like when we switched 100 percent to i was just telling vicky switched 100 percent to um to paper performance like strictly mm -hmm. it, it was incredible we fired three people and was still doing all the work like the amount of efficiencies that they are they are just containing inside of themselves is the biggest efficiency mm -hmm. hands down and so how do you like unlock that is the question right yeah and so the cultural aspect is good but I've just found like, you know, culture is great. And like everyone driving towards the same thing is good. But when it hits their paycheck, it's nuts. It's incredible. Yeah. Like you, I can't even, until you actually run, run the system for a little bit or like do something around their paycheck and their performance, it's hard to describe just how fast they get stuff done. I, if I was you, I would do the hybrid as like, look, your hourly rate is still the same. You okay. cannot make less money. They're gonna like this. Like there's no negative thing that can happen here. Uh, and this is the best way to transition to any sort of a pay for performance, right? Okay. Like if someone was making 25 and I was like, okay, now your base is 15. That'd be a little bit scary for them, right? If they're yeah. trying to make sure they have a solid paycheck. Well, so what I did is I made 18 the, the number because like there wasn't too many of them making more than 18 already. Like it was, it's already a high wage, yeah. right? And so what you could do is like, look, you're not going to get a pay cut. You, you're still going to make your 12 or 14 an hour, but you have the potential to make more now. Okay. So that's how you pitch it to them. Only okay. the upside. There's only upside in this for you guys. Okay. You, you know, if you have a horrible day and you make 1.0, you're still going to get your money. But I promise you that 1.0 is they've been grinding it out, trying to get, you know, figure things out. It's not a 1.0 for them sitting in the truck all day. Right. Because right? there's at least potential for them to make more. Because okay. if, if, they, if they make $2 more per hour, um, on an eight hour day, it's $16. You know, 16 bucks in their pocket. That sixteen dollars though is probably another fifty to sixty in your pocket. So that's how you can kind of look at it. Okay. Um, and, and in, do in order to like get them on board, it's strictly like there's only upside for you guys. You cannot make yeah, less. Yeah. Either way, you're making what you would have made, yeah. but you can be able to make more. In order to be more profitable for the business, you know, in order for us to grow, like the cultural yeah. side of things, for that to work, we need to, you know, we can give you more money. And this is how we I pitched it originally. Like the very beginning, like look. We did this one job, the guys, it was budgeted for 100 hours, they did it in 50. And I wow. said, look, I could afford to pay these guys 40 bucks an hour, but I can't next week when it takes 100 hours and it was a 70 hour job. Right. right? So I'm like, I want to be able to pay more when you guys do really good, but um, in order to do that, there's got to be a give and take, right? So like, there's, sure. you know, when you do 100 on the 70, you're going to make the flat, like the base. Because sometimes that is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just inevitable. Yeah. And so uh, I would really recommend just doing the hourly as your, like your base. Okay. Right? Not even talking about base. Just being like, it's really a bonus. Like, hey, we're adding this to the... So you, even if you pitch them at an idea that, like, we want to go more to a pay by performance model so that you can grow your wages here and you can um uh you know make more money here but what we're going to do is this fall we're going to implement this which okay. is kind of a hybrid okay. it's gonna be a two dollar per hour um at the end of the week and so you're gonna make 80 to 100 dollars ish per week more 
if you hit 3.0 or above, um, you could make it for landscaping jobs if you all the jobs are under budgeted hours. Um, however, that one's a little more tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but then say that next year we're going to be doing it similar way, but where you can make more than that two dollars more per hour. But we want to test it with this. Okay. You want them on like a hundred percent on board. Okay. Like, don't say anything like it's going to be based on commissions or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's only going to be upside because what you're going to do next year is you're going to put you're going to make twelve the base, and you're going to make it where they can only go higher than fourteen. Like, it'll only go higher. So yeah. it's only positive for them. They always are going to think that the boss is out to get them, and that we're trying to like do something behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. That's right. why it's super important to be like, just give them a base and say there's only upside. You could like at the end of the day, you could only make money here. Right, and so like that's why I made base eighteen. I was gonna make it fifteen. I was like, I gotta make it eighteen so that literally no one can say no to this. Yeah. So they cannot make less because so many of them were at eighteen. I was like, there's just no loss for them. They can only make more. But I knew that them making eighteen dollars under the new system would be so much more efficient than them making eight eighteen dollars before. Yeah. Because beforehand they could like eighteen dollars and ten cents now means that they have been killing it, right? They, they made better than average. Whereas before, I could pay them $18 an hour, but they were really producing at like eight bucks an hour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um, that's what I would recommend. Like really, that's the biggest thing I would say. Because like if you can implement it now and there's some good feedback or good uh, return from them on it, even if you just did it on mowing to get started, because mm -hmm. I think it's all about just getting started. Yeah. Like, that's why at first I would literally just pitch it as, hey, this scoreboard thing now actually kind of matters. Okay. If, yeah. it, if it's 3.0 or above for the week, we're going to give you $2 more there. per hour. Because right. I know that some of them will like, I know Casey will be like, well, this happened. Does you're going to have that. You know? and, and at first you're going to be like, this is so annoying. But like, you got it. you're going to have to figure those things out. But okay. you, it's more about just initiating it, honestly. Um, and at the end of the day, all things said, they can't make less money. Yeah. Right? So you're only playing with their right. bonus. So like that's the that's the at the end of the day, if someone's giving you a lot of flags, like, look, 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 you were making twelve before. The worst you can do now is twelve. Yeah. You can only make four you know, thirteen, fourteen, whatever, right? Okay. So okay. um that's that's the end. You know, hopefully it doesn't get to that stage, but they're gonna have questions. And it's gonna be things like mistakes. If, what if I have to clean up someone else's mistake? What if something breaks down? And the simple way for now, since you're doing the hybrid, is take time off of what you use for the scoreboard. So if you've got to go fix someone's job and it took 30 extra minutes, it's going to go, your clocked in time for that day is going to go from 8 to 7.5. 7. Right. If you did blades for an hour, I'll take you from 8 to 7, right? And it seems like a lot of things, but I promise you, it's like two, one or two variables a day that you actually have to change, Okay. right? In terms of what you'll do on that spreadsheet. And I just make the spreadsheet super, super simple. Okay. Like, um, like it should be the name, dates, like Monday through Saturday, you know, the, with a running total of hours and revenue, um, and that averages out 3.0 or whatever. You don't even have to do that. Like, you, however you want to do it, okay. even if you just do revenue and hours, and then at the end of the week, just divide it up. But you're already dividing it for each day. Right, right. So, and you're already doing the averages. Yeah. So you're really doing all the work. Okay. Already, yeah. really. Yeah. It's the only thing that you, I guess, really would be changing is if you take some like manual attraction, subtractions or additions, yeah, taking that. right? Yeah. Like they help so-and-so for an hour and then it comes off of this person okay. kind of thing, right? Okay. Well, it did take my level of anxiety down a little <laughs> bit, yeah. you know, uh, but I'm definitely willing to try that. Yeah. I mean, I can see the benefit, so. Yeah. Like, like, I just really encourage you to just try it. Like, okay. You, like, you, you might get some kickback, you might have some questions, but at the end of the day, you are only giving them the option to make more money, right? And so um, don't think it, like, you don't let them try to corner you. This is why I fire one of our guys. I, he, uh, he kept trying to corner us as if we were trying to do something manipulative, mm -hmm. or like we're trying to do stuff from behind people back. And I'm like, I'm not having it. The only reason I'm doing this is to keep people here and make the culture better. And I'm not going to have someone convic um, convicting, of, uh, convicting, of, convicting us of, quote, sabotaging them. The yeah. employees. Yeah. Like, that's just ridiculous. So when he said that, he was fired. And then when you get that person, you get them spreading around that negativity. That's exactly yeah. what's and happening. Then, and yeah. then now yeah. everybody's kind of plants that seed, you know, so. And then what's going to happen, too, is they are going to talk. Oh, for sure. But you want that. Because when they're talking now, it's like they're starting to think about all the ways that they're, they're spending time. Right? Like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to, like, stop and get this. And, and it's going to be negative at first, but that's the talk you want to see. 
Because like if I stopped pay by performance tomorrow, they would they would all of us they'd still be thinking the same way, right? It would eventually wear off. Right, right. But like the amount of there will be a lot of talk, a lot of talk. But the thing that you can fall back on is you're, you're not lowering anyone's wages. You're only giving them the option to make more. Yeah. And if you come to it as a hate, I want to give people the option to make more if they work hard. Period. 3.0 or above on the week for mowing, you're going to get $2 more per hour. I, I, would say, I would say, though, if you, this is my recommendation to anyone in any industry. If you're ever turning away work, you have to raise your prices. Yeah. Like, if you're saying no to 5 or 10 last week, raise your prices. I, my waiting list right now is like 25 people, and that's the, that's the people who just said, it, what, just put me on the waiting list. Okay, I said, well, there's probably no, I mean, I'm probably not going to be able to service you at all this year. Just put me on there anyway. And that's not even all the people who just said, okay. And we've had definitely a It's been really yeah. sad. And yeah. we've had plenty of people say, okay, well, now this year I'm going to find somebody else. Mm -hmm. But next year I'm going to be calling. Yeah. You know. So next spring you guys are going to get swamped. But this is the same conversation I had with a young couple who also own um, a landscaping company in Midland. Yeah. And she'll call and talk to me. And she goes, yeah, I know when a phone call is. It's just me telling them no. Like, they don't even know the fluctuation that they've gotten. Yeah. Like, everybody's so busy. Everybody's flush with cash right now. Yeah, but but see, the thing is, if, yeah. if that's the case, we've got to raise our prices. Okay. Because okay. it's totally okay to be a four-man operation and charge $100 per hour. I, I know plenty right. of landscapers right. that are doing that. Right? You have so much leads, so many leads coming in, you only need a 10% close ratio. It's totally okay to do that. Yeah. Um, but what's not okay is to be at 35, 40 an hour mm -hmm. or whatever, and then, and still be turning work away. Right. 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 So there's two ways to reduce, you know, demand. Either A, a raise the prices or B, you increase, increase the supply of how many employees you have. And that's been hard. <laughs> right. Because with, cause yeah. with, with more employees comes more trucks and as you're finding out, like trailers and all that, yeah. right? Yeah. So I would say before you actually even up the ante on finding like more people just raise the price raise price because 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 you're gonna need that money like i i really you got to be over 50 on those landscaping jobs like, that's technical yeah. work right so yeah. like at least 50 um to get those and then like even the mowing next spring I, let's just count on the fact that you're gonna be swamped with work mm -hmm. yeah. why not just account for that by giving a five dollar five dollar weekly ten dollar bi-weekly increase to every single customer Let's say you lose 10%. Let's say 20% of them you get lost. Okay, fine. You're going to replace those 20% like that next spring. And the 80% that you have now, you're literally going to triple your profit margin. That extra $5, because you're right yeah, now you're making like a dollar already, or two. Yeah, yeah. Profit, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is when you start making money, though. Right? When you start raising prices is when you make money. Mm -hmm. um, and so... You know, now you're kind of breaking even slash making a little bit. When you start raising prices, every dollar you raise the price is profit in your pocket. It, you, okay. don't, you don't have to go do anything extra. No more trucks, no more. You just raise the price and you make more money. Yeah. And should we still, like, with the rate matrix, like, do you still have that on your website? The, like, the, the, the like, Excel yeah. sheet right there. Like, yes, because you said that a lot of people want to go look at the prices. Yeah, so yeah. we, I still have that. Um, on our website for mowing with explanations with explanations yeah. and um, that's for the mowing and then for the landscaping kind of the same thing mm -hmm. um, which we tried to follow you know but closely yeah so like like if you look at our rate which is nuts now our minimum weekly is 40 bucks and that's a, anything under 2,000 square feet Holy cow. so it's expensive but we started at 20 and every year just kind of moved it up because I'm not gonna say no to customers because we're five, six weeks booked out and not raise my price. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're gonna raise my price or I'm gonna get more employees. There's one or the other. Okay. Right. And so if you're not, if you can't find the employees, go raise your price. Just raise the price. Yeah. Like, um, like I would really recommend that to be the spring move. If okay. the fall move is the employees and try to increase the efficiency so that we get this work done and get um, a little more, you know, profit in the fall on the cleanup side, that's fantastic. And then the spring, the play should be. Raise prices on every single mowing customer. Like, just do it across the board. Five dollars weekly, ten dollars biweekly. Your prices are so smashed together right now that you can do that. Like, mm -hmm. if you were, if you had ranges of like, like we range everywhere from forty to uh, two hundred dollars per mow. And so there's such a massive spread, I couldn't just like say five dollars. Right. Because some people would be getting a two percent increase, some people would be getting a a, a twelve and a half percent increase, right? Whereas yours are so close between 
30 and 50 that like five dollars and ten dollars makes perfect sense right okay and i would definitely do the 10 on the bi-weekly don't do five and five well yeah we're just gonna change yeah, that we're too, changing that because if you, you notice we are bi -weekly weekly in the spring anymore no. yeah uh we had one guy that well we had two guys that stayed bi-weekly this spring one guy was because he said that it didn't grow that much and we said that's fine we won't double cut it then yeah and there was grass well yeah because they expect you even if it gets long they want it to look perfect, and they yeah. want you to double cut in it. Our, in our estimate, when we give it our weekly and our bi-weekly, we also make a note there that if it's over six inches, we're going to be charging an X per hour, and we make it like 80 or $90 per hour. Holy cow. Okay. So that way, okay. if they go bi-weekly, and they need to be on weekly, and they're like, no, I want bi-weekly, that's fine. But if it's over six inches when our guys get there, and they take a picture and attach it to service autopilot, we're going to charge you $90 per hour for them to be there. Okay, we'll be on weekly for the next couple months. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah.